Okay, we are recording. Okay, you ready? You know, John, I keep getting asked, people say, how do you create so much smoke with those smokers? And it's really pretty simple. We're just using pine straw and wood pellets, like you put in a wood stove or a wood smoker. And then we put pine straw on top of that, and once it gets going, it's hard to beat. Yeah. It'll probably last, once you load that smoker good, it'll go a good two or three hours, won't it? Oh, it'll go all day, yeah. All day, yeah. All day, yeah. John knows how to load a smoker. <laughs> so, it's Monday morning. It's the weekend after Thanksgiving. And we are doing oxalic acid vaporization. I say we, what I really should say is John and Selena are doing oxalic <laughs> acid vaporization. And it's a little cold uh, to be to optimum, but if we waited for the perfect situation, we would have a hard time keeping up. And the bees are out there. We're going to walk out there because it just got through raining for a day, and it's a soppy, wet mess on the little road out there. So they've got everything they need. Everything. We are now using, yeah, the mask, the oxalic. You got your gloves, John? You got your yes. gloves, John? Okay, I got mine, yep. too. I got okay. it. Normally, we would drive out there, but I just don't want to tear. And yeah, we could get in and out, but we would tear that road up because it's so wet. So we'll just walk on out there. You can barely see the bees in the distance out there. John, what's this in the dirt? I think this one's a, mine. Your old one? Yeah, that's the, my the high school. One? Not, oh, okay. How long old. have you been missing that? Uh, it's been a little while. Last summer. Yeah, I thought <laughs> yes. you found my uh, my <laughs> So bit. okay, so like, oh, so we we, <laughs> we would have had nukes along this road, so it would have been in the summertime when we were yeah. working nukes. <laughs> it's amazing how things like that yeah. pop up. Oh yeah. And disappear. <laughs> my Leatherman. Your smoker? Yep, we did. lost a smoker. <laughs> did you find that smoker? No, I How didn't. How do you lose a smoker? I don't know. I don't know. We don't, that was weird, man. That was I know, weird. probably fell <laughs> off the truck or something. We never did. In, in this business, I say you have to have two of everything. So if you run over one with the <laughs> truck, you still got one to work with. Yeah, I thought you found my leather there. Like, <laughs> I wish I had. It's actually a beautiful day, even though it's cold. Across the street from Home Depot. Set the rags out on top. First? Yep. Set them okay. Here we go. John's old t-shirts. These are all old Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they work though. Okay, so we were talking about temperatures. I feel the optimum temperature to do oxalic vaporization is probably in the low to mid 40s Fahrenheit. The reason being is that um, it's not so cold that they're clustered here. tightly, but it's also not so warm that the bees are flying. Of course, waiting for the optimum temperature can kind of keep you from getting all your work done, so we do what we got to do. It's about 35 degrees Fahrenheit right now, and we're going to go ahead and start, and that way uh, we can get a lot mm -hmm. done today. It's supposed to be a high of 51 degrees Fahrenheit, so I believe these guys can do this all day long. Might have a couple bees flying at the end of the day, but won't be too big a deal. We're at what we call the Walmart yard. That'd you can see enough. some colonies have a nuke over a double screen board. Uh, the double deeps are going to get seven to eight grams, and the nukes above will get about three to three and a half. And it's always uh, important, if you can, to block the entrance with a rag of some sort after you do the oxalic to keep the vapors in, at least for a few minutes. We don't always do it. Sometimes we've forgotten our rags or, you know, whatever, but uh, it, it's very helpful. <clears throat> now, let's talk about these things for a little bit. These are the new turbo models. We have been using, up till very recently, the old, what's called the compact model. And they work great. The problem with these is that they're about $100 more. These are well over $500 unless you get them on sale. But we have switched to them. I feel the money's worth it for us because it saves. they save enough time to offset the extra cost. If I only had 10 colonies, I would not invest in the turbo 10 or 20 or 
maybe even 30, but you know, with hundreds or over a thousand, having these turbos actually pays off. Also, something else we've done is we've bent the little brass nipple to make it more conducive to working with our 3 8 entrances. These things are really engineered for a three-quarter entrance or a half inch. With the 3 8 we like to get this thing kind of bent a little bit so it works better. A little tricky. It's easy to break these, believe it or not. I think the company that makes these things should have an option or something, because I know there's a lot of people that use a 3 8 entrance. And these I guys do? will yeah. be bundled up. Okay. I've got a microphone on Selena. <laughs> so, Selena, i got a microphone on you. No four-letter words or anything oh, like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I never hear a four-letter word out of Selena. Now, John, <laughs> that's a different matter. I, uh... Okay. It takes a minute to get rolling, but once they get rolling, they'll go through this yard very fast. <clears throat> a little bit of smoke. Doesn't take much, just something to keep them from trying to come out. So I've done these type of videos a couple times, but I'm doing a new one. So we're waiting for the light to go solid. It'll blink while it's heating up, and then it'll go uh, just solid red whenever it's ready to go. And that's usually uh, 260 degrees Celsius or 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I think mine are both set to Celsius. Once these things warm up, they keep up pretty good. Oh, yeah, they go. They just We're using the Milwaukee version. You can get them in DeWalt or Makita or Bosch. We like the Milwaukee. Test, test. Okay, John, I want you to show me how these plungers are adjusted. Okay. Um, yeah, these are the plungers. I'll, they go in into there. Yeah, show me how you can adjust the dosage. Um, right here, it's got the numbers, like one gram, two grams, three grams, four grams. And then that the bottom of that little piece of metal is right where it's at. And you just spin this. As you tighten it, it'll either go down, you know, to get to wherever you want it. Like where there would be two right there. And then if you want to go back up, you just loosen. You can go up to four. And that's how it works. Simple enough. Yep, and you just boom, stick it in the, we use these, me and Selena or whoever, we'll have these with oxalic acid. And you just stick it in there, boom, and then. You just, you know, whatever, wherever it's suggested. Exactly, that's how much, yeah, yeah you can see. Mm -hmm. That's where it goes to. Cool. All right. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. So you definitely like the turbo more than the other oh, compact they're really version. Fast. It tells yeah. you when it's done burning off. See, I can go ahead and move now instead of waiting. I go ahead and move that while it's. Get out of your way, John. Oh, you're good, you're good. Uh, 
<laughs> Stay upwind. That's John's favorite pink shirt. John, were you wearing that pink shirt? You and Steven Tyler, pink is my favorite color. <laughs> so you got to hold that one, don't you? Yeah. Nothing yeah. to hang it on. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, that's the only downside to these. Okay. I bet you the people on the highway are wondering what in the world's going on out here. <laughs> This bee yard here that is so exposed and right on the highway has made us kind of recognizable. Yeah. And the community likes it. Yeah. I talk to people all the time that say they especially really think it's when, cool. Uh, John does cartwheels out here for them. Huh? I said, especially when John does cartwheels for them. Yeah, out here. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a few comments on that on Facebook. <clears throat> is one set on Fahrenheit and one set on uh, yes. Celsius, yeah. yeah. Mine are both on Celsius. Both on Celsius, yeah. yeah. yeah you can switch it if you want, but we, it doesn't matter, you know, we know. Yeah, you know it's working. Yeah, I know what the thing is. Like, we're good, burn off. The racetrack's gas station contacted us one time last summer saying bees were in their trash cans. And the fellow that manages the place is the, let's see, son-in-law of one of the ladies that used to work in our pouring room, Michelle. And so I came out and <clears throat> we had a very friendly conversation. I told him if we have to move the bees, we will. But I suggested keeping the trash cans clean. In other words, don't wait till they pile up with a bunch of cokes and things like that. And we never heard from them again. So <clears throat> I guess it worked. Yeah. I thought this is a nice yard. Yeah, I hate Very to lose this yard. Down. Okay, we're done with this yard. I'm gonna go back to the office and answer emails and do business business. And these guys are gonna head on into North Carolina and work up there the rest of the day. They've got 15 yards left to do. I don't know if they can do quite that many today or not, but it'll be close. Once they get rolling and get everything fired up, they can do a lot of yards in a day, especially if they can work all day long like they can today. The temperatures are conducive to that. I bought them breakfast in town, fed them well. They should be good <laughs> for the day. <laughs> no more mites. <laughs> no more mites, yeah. <laughs> So what we got going on here is that these bees are, for the most part, broodless. A few have a little 
section of brood. And we will be back probably in about two, possibly three weeks to do it again. That'll be our two rounds for this winter. The weather's gonna be cool for the next few weeks as far as the long-term forecast is giving us and that will keep them from rearing brood. As we move into December, there's the potential for pollen to come in if the weather turns nice. We have several plants that can produce pollen in winter if it you know, gets up to 55, 60 degrees. This is a wet yard. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, well, you have a wonderful day. Yeah. And I will see you when you get back in. Okay. I'll be there. Okay. <laughs>